Hi, you welcome to God's presence. The application of what I'm about to share with you today will help you deal squarely with all forms of demonic opposition from the root. And I pray that victory will become a reality in your life in the name of Jesus. Our focus is still on the series titled Knowing God Intimately. In our last video, we studied one of the titles of God called the George of All. Knowing Almighty God as the Judge of All delivers to you justice from all forms of oppression. Today, we want to focus on another title of God. But first, listen to this. The names or title of God identifies and captures a memorial of the different dimensions of God. For instance, when someone calls God Ebenezer, by revelation, is saying to God, let the dimension of the memorial that that name carries as Ebenezer be made manifest. Ebenezer simply means a stone of help. It's actually a memorial stone that was set by Prophet Samuel between Mizpah and Shen in the northern part of Jerusalem when God helped the Israelites in battle against the Philistines. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12, the Bible says, And Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen, and called his name Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. So when you begin to call God Ebenezer, you are saying, Lord, help me against every battle. Help me by giving me victory. So that's what the understanding of the various names or title of God can deliver to you. Amen. Now, in today's study, our focus is on the title, The Ancient of Days. The Ancient of Days is one of the titles of God that brings the dispensation of the justice system of God into manifestation. That name only appears three times in the Bible. And each time you see that name mentioned, we see God seated on his throne dispensing justice to those who have appealed to the court of heaven. For instance, in the book of Daniel chapter 7 from verses 9 to 10, the Bible says, I watched till the thrones were put in place, and the Ancient of Days was seated. Now God here yeah, is seated on the throne. Watch what happens next. It says, His garment was white as snow and the air of his head was like pure wool his throne was a fiery flame its will a burning fire now it says a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him a thousand thousands ministered to him ten thousands Ten times ten thousand stood before him. And listen, he says, The court were seated, and the books were opened. So, when God was identified as the ancient of days, it 
captures in memoria for us to activate the dimensions of God that administers the protocol of his justice system. And so when God comes as the ancient of days, his court is open to us so that we can receive justice, so that we can appeal cases, and so that we can, as solicitors, come to the court of the Lord to plead our case with him. Amen. Now the Bible says the court was seated and the books were opened. So when the books were opened, it means that the statement of the case was read and then the proceeding of the court began. And in this case, the court was seated to judge some beasts that were operating on the face of the earth. There were actually four beasts that were operating on the face of the earth. And the Bible says that when the fourth beast showed up, he began to speak some pompous words, some blasphemous words. And as one of the little on on his head spoke those blasphemous words, Daniel in the Revelation said, I watched until the throne of God was set and God, the ancient of days, was seated and judgment began. Now, when judgment was issued, the Bible says that these beasts were judged and the fourth one was slain. Their powers were taken away. Just listen to it in the book of Daniel chapter 7 from verse 11 to 12, a continuation of what we've just read. It says, I watched then because of the sound of the pompous words which the on was speaking. I watched till the beast was slain. Now the on was on the beast. And on represent demonic powers. This on in particular had eyes and mouth and was speaking pompously. Speaking blasphemous words. Now he says, the beast was slain and his body was destroyed and given to the burning flame. As for the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away. So when you approach the court of Almighty God, who is the ancient of days, he can take the power of the enemy that is opposing you off you and break their hold of your life. Praise the Lord. Now it says, Yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. Now the ancient of days is the one who is from everlasting to everlasting. He has no beginning or ending. He's greater than all. Is more powerful than all, is stronger than the strongest. So, as a result of that, is able to judge anyone. And being the supreme judge of heaven and earth and beneath the earth, his words are the final say. Whatever he says stands. His judgment is final. And that is the best person you can go to. To get justice on any matter. You know, there's somebody who had a court case. He was a minister. He said that the situation was against him because he was wrong. And he knew that he could be sent to prison. So he had such strong anxiety that he could not eat. He could not sleep. He kept thinking. And he went to another minister in person of Reverend Egin to join him in prayers. And Reverend Egin encouraged him to seek the Lord for mercy and to cast his cares and burden upon the Lord. He did that. And after a few weeks, he was able to eat and retain food. Because if he takes in anything, he just throws it out. Now, eventually, 
he was able to get back to sleeping and the day for the judgment came now he has appealed to the supreme judge of heaven and earth who is the ancient of days now when they go to the law court and his case was read the judge of the court said i don't want to be a judge over a minister case dismissed and that was how he was discharged and acquitted praise the lord now he got that vindication not because he did what was right he was wrong and he knew it but because he repented and he went to the court of the ancient of days to seek for mercy and intervention and you know what god showed up and i believe that god will show up in your case in the mighty name of jesus some time ago i once held a child that was meant to die and the child was dying now i had to cry to god and the lord told me the child's parents had done some abominable things they were involved in witchcraft had killed some persons and you know justice was calling for their own child but I appealed to Almighty God, the ancient of days, and asked for mercy and broke the covenant between that child and the parents. And you know what? God showed mercy and spared the life of the child. And the child was restored back to health. Hallelujah. So God is a God of justice, but is also the merciful George. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, it does not matter what you're going through if you call upon the Lord and appeal to the court of heaven. You will get justice over all forms of demonic force. It does not matter the power they carry or that they wield. In Isaiah chapter 51 verse 9, the Bible says, Awake, awake, put on strength, O harm of the Lord. Awake as in the ancient days. You see? Isaiah caught a revelation that God is the ancient one who has executed justice and judged all forms of forces and powers from time immemorial, even before time began. And he said to God, Awake as in the ancient days. Praise God. He says, In the generation of old, are you not the harm that caught Rahab apart and wounded the serpent? In God's kingdom, judgment precedes war and possession. Now what that implies is that if you are going to go into any battle, you must first approach the court of heaven to get a verdict or an authorization permitting you to proceed to the battlefield. Now, failure to do that does not guarantee that you return victorious. For these reasons, the kings in those days would usually ask God for the outcome of a battle before proceeding forth to fight. David did that several times, and he never lost a battle. Many times he would inquire from the Lord, should I go fight the Philistines? Like in, in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 5, the Bible says, God said to him, go, you surely be victorious. I've delivered them into your hand. He returned victorious. And then the Philistines gathered again in the valley. And he asked of the Lord, should I go? And God said, God gave him a strategy. He said, go fetch a compass around the mulberry tree. And when you hear the sound of marching on the tree, know that I've gone ahead, ahead of you. And he obeyed God's strategy, followed it, and he became victorious. There was a time that Ahab went to war, contrary to God's judgment. Actually, God wanted him to be judged. Uh, Micaiah told a revelation of what had happened in the courts of heaven. How that God has asked which spirit will go and persuade Ahab to go to war so that he can fall in the war front and be killed. So that his sins can be judged. 
And Micaiah said that one spirit came and said after this manner, another spirit came, said something else. But eventually a spirit came and said he would persuade Ahab. And the Lord authorized him to go that he would succeed. Now there were 400 prophets apart from Ahab who told Ahab he would be victorious. But only the, the prophet Micaiah had heaven's perspective and heard from the court of heaven of what was the verdict for that battle. And Ahab never returned from that battle. He died, even though he disguised himself. Now, in Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, the Bible reveals clearly to us that there is a pattern for commanding victory in the war front. And the pattern is that you first of all received judgment from God before proceeding to war. Revelation chapter 19 verse 11, it says, Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it was called faithful and true. That's Jesus. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. So Jesus doesn't make war until he has judged in righteousness. And that is the standard of God. Anytime as a believer you need to fight a spiritual warfare, first approach the courts of heaven and seek a verdict from the ancient of days authorizing you to be victorious in that battle. Because you do not know what has transpired that has led to that warfare. Many times people go into battle that they have no right fighting and they become victim instead of victors. When you understand this, you become more careful in engaging in spiritual warfare, especially if you want to fight to win. Yes, Jesus has won the victory for us and we have been authorized to bind and to lose, especially in dealing with demonic spirits. But you also need to receive heaven's perspective so that you can understand why the enemy is bold enough to contain with that individual or with you, knowing fully well that Jesus has won the victory for us. The truth is that Satan does not contain until he has a legal ground to do so. When Satan stood against David, it was because David had seen the numbering the children of Israel and Satan sought to destroy them. So usually there is a cause for every action that Satan takes because he knows that if there is no legal right for him to contend with believers, the Lord will rebuke him. And when you even resist him, he will have to flee. So he looks for legal rights upon which he can stand to contend with believers. Now I'd like you to know that Jesus himself was judged before he possessed dominion. In Daniel chapter 7, from verse 13 to 14, the Bible says, I was watching in the nine visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming in the clouds of heaven. Now, he was coming with the cloud of weaknesses. He says, He came to the ancient of days, that's Almighty God, and they brought him near before him. So Jesus came to the ancient of days. Now Daniel here was speaking about a revelation he had received concerning the judgment of Christ. Because Jesus became sin for us. He was judged on behalf of sinners so that he can suffer for the consequence of their sin while we receive the justice that he purchased by his suffering. And by so doing, 
he suffered for us and became rejected we received the love of God became accepted and enjoyed the comfort of Jesus he became sick so that we might become healed he became sin that we might become the righteousness of God what actually happened on the cross is a transaction a legal transaction and the result of that is that everything that Jesus died for that is Antichrist was born by him why we receive the benefit of what he died for now the Bible says he came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him now listen to what verse 14 says he says then to him was given that having been judged to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom he says that all peoples nations and languages should serve him wow his dominion was an everlasting dominion in other words it would never cease it will be forever he says which shall not pass away and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed glory to god hallelujah now why did he receive this because he was authorized by god to have it you know it's like visiting a party and sitting at the back and they bring you to the person who is maybe the chairman of the occasion or the one who is hosting the party the host of the party and he places you on a seat on the high table and nobody is going to get there to take you away or ask you to leave there because the chairman of the ceremony or the host has given you that privilege but if you go sit on the high table without the approval of the chairman of the ceremony or the host of the party you can be asked to leave so that's exactly what is happening here almighty god who is the ancient of days judges the lord jesus and certified him just and then gives him a kingdom and a dominion that will be forever amen you see we can receive nothing except it be given to us from above and whatever God gives you will be permanent. Whatever God does, the Bible says, shall be forever. Nothing shall be added to it. Nothing can be taken from it. Say, so God does it so that men may fear him. Hallelujah. Now, he took petitioning the court of heaven for the saints to receive a verdict to their favor. And when they receive a verdict to their favor, not only did the ancient of days authorize them to go and possess victory at the battlefield they also possess the kingdom in Daniel chapter 7 verse 21 to 22 the Bible says I was watching and the same on was making war against the saints and prevailing against them you see there was an ongoing battle the on was prevailing against the saints and then the saints left the battlefield went and petitioned the court of heaven and the ancient of days came and judgment was made in favor of the saints of the most high and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom hallelujah now very quickly i want to share with you six steps to removing spiritual barriers and getting justice from the ancient of days many of us are going through prolonged battles many of us are having challenges getting answers to our prayers some of us have prayed for a long time and there is no answer some of us have dealt with reoccurring challenges again and again and there seemed to be no solution in view. Now, what I want to share with you with 
enable you to remove all forms of spiritual barriers and also we help you to get justice from the ancient of days when applied praise god now when you as have when you experience or have a challenge of reoccurring affliction attack delays opposition unanswered prayers demonic confrontations and you plead the blood of jesus you bind them in the name of jesus you command the judgment of god to come upon them and all you are doing is like pouring water on a brick wall you're not making any headway now when that happens some of us believers tend to take a position that requires us to keep fighting putting in more effort praying more fasting more contending more and some of us think that if you would just fast more if you just pray more if you just cry more then you'll break through now it was zig zig ziglar that said doing the same thing and expecting a different result is a sign of insanity if something is not working there's a reason why it's not working and what is expected is that we go consult the lord and say lord what is going on here why am i not making progress bishop david Oedipo shared an experience he said for two years the church he was pastoring didn't grow and he said he did all manner of things and the church refused to grow people were not coming and he said he, they had three days dry fast to seek the Lord for help and for mercy to find out why the church is not growing he said because if they continue at that pace when he's a hundred years old then maybe there may be a hundred persons in the congregation so he began to seek the lord for mercy and help and god's intervention and as he did that he appealed to the court of heaven and the lord said to him go outside of the church so he went out of the church and as he went the lord said to him turn back he turned back and saw a black canopy covering the roof of the church now that was after three days of inquiry of seeking god for help and he said he got so angry in his spirit and rebuked that demonic canopy that was misrepresenting what god was doing in their ministry and he saw it rolled off and left and he said when the following service came people began to come and they were asking where was the, where's the restaurant that was here some said where is the white garment church that was here he said no we've been here now they were there but the enemy had a misrepresentation a legal grant to hinder people from coming in and they've been laboring there for two years so I want to share with you six steps very quickly that will help you deal with such challenges in your life so that you can make headway and make progress as you deal with legal grants or legal rights that the enemy has to oppose you. Now the first thing to do is to seek redress from the court of heaven to approach the ancient of days and you can approach the ancient of days or assess the court of heaven through salvation thanksgiving praise and worship and that means that if you are not born again you can come into God's presence but if you surrender your life to Christ and you make god your father and make jesus your lord and savior 
that alone gives you access to the very presence of God and to the court of heaven because the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 22 it says we have come to Mount Zion to the city of God to the holy mountains to God the judge of all so when we become born again we are not trying to come to the courts of the Lord because the courts of the Lord is on the holy mountain of God which is in Zion it says you have come so in other words salvation gives you access to that throne of the judge called the ancient of days now apart from that the Bible says in Psalm 100 verse 4 it says enter into his gates with thanksgiving into his courts with praise be thankful to him and bless his holy name now we, we know about the three dimensions of the temple of God the outer court the inner court and the holies of holies now praise will give you access to any of the courts of the Lord enter into his gates with thanksgiving thanksgiving brings you through the gates into his courts with praise so if you praise God, you have access to his court. You have access to the sanctuary. You have access to the court of Almighty God, the ancient of days. Now, having assessed the court of the Lord, the second thing to do is to state your case. Speaking of court proceeding, it is important to note that until the case is read, the proceeding does not begin. So when the judge is seated and the proceeding is about to begin, the books must be opened. And when the books are opened and the proceeding begins because the case is read out, then the solicitor at such instance begins to state his case. Now, you can state your case by speaking of what is written about you in the books of heaven that will run justice against that challenge. There are two books that every individual has. One is the book of purpose. God has written certain things, his plans and thoughts concerning your life that you need to fulfill. The second is the book of record, an account of your history of everything that you do upon the face of the earth. Now, God has given us the privilege as believers to have access to that which is written concerning us. If you read Psalm 139 verse 16, it says that God saw our substance when we are yet unformed. He saw our substance and he said that all his thoughts concerning us are written in his book. So God has them written. The things that come to us as words of prophecy, visions, dreams, and we see ourselves doing things that have been written in the book of heaven. Now when you approach the court of the Lord and you begin to quote or talk about what God has written concerning you, now the Bible says in Isaiah 43 verse 26, it says, Put me in remembrance. Let us contain together. State your case that you may be acquitted. Now when God says put me in remembrance, he's saying, let me know the things that have been written concerning you. Let me know what is written in the books so that you can get justice. State your case. Bring me in remembrance. Or put me in remembrance. And then he says, let us contain together. It, it, it doesn't mean that we should contain with God. What it means is that we should join God to contain with the enemy. He says, let us contain together that you may be acquitted. Praise God. So if we join him and contain, he says, we will be what? We will be acquitted praise the lord now in romans chapter 8 verse 33 the bible says 
who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. So God wants to justify us. And he's saying, state your case. Praise God. Now when we approach the throne of heaven and we begin to state our case, we begin to inquire, Lord, why are things like this? What is going on? Your word says that this is my year of unusual miracles. I'm not seeing miracles. Your word says that this is the year of deliverance, of restoration, of abundance. Lord, I'm not seeing it. What's going on? Now, as you begin to state your case, reporting or reminding God what is stated in the books in heaven concerning you, the prophetic word over your life, and even what is written in the Bible concerning you. As you do that, the accuser will show up. So the third thing you need to do is to take the legal right that the accuser has against you. You have to take away the legal right of the accuser. And you do this by agreeing with the accuser. Now, the, Jesus said, he says, when your adversary has a legal case against you, quickly agree with your adversary. Or else he will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the jailer. And you will not live there until you have made good your case. Or you pay what is due to your adversary. Now, agreeing with the accuser of the brethren, who is Satan the devil, doesn't mean that you should agree that he is right. But when he begins to point his hand on sins in your life or in your bloodline or things that you have done wrong that gives him the right to stop you, oppose you, contend with you, to agree with him means to acknowledge your sins and repent of them. To humble yourself before God and say, yes, I'm, I've sinned, I did it. You know what the Lord said in Isaiah? He says, come let us reason together, says the Lord of hosts. He says, though your sin be red like crimson, they will become as what? As white as snow. He wants to reason with you. He wants to take the hindrance away. Have you observed that when you sin against the Lord or you are not living right, when you kneel down to pray, the first thing the devil will talk to you about is your sins. It just comes up. The thoughts of the wrong you have done stands against you and the accuser is accusing you before God and saying you do not qualify. You do not deserve the favor or help of God because of your sin. So if you want to deal with demonic opposition, if you want to get justice from the court of heaven, you must deal with those accusations. Now let's see an example in the book of Job. Because it's very important that you get to the root of every legal right the enemy has against you and deal with them. Or else you would remain stagnant in that situation. Now that's not my desire for you, but that's the truth. Now let's take a case study of Job. In Job chapter 1, verse 7 to 8, the Bible gives us a vivid picture of a court proceeding that took place unknown to Job. Job was not there. And yet, the verdict from that preceding impacted the life of Job greatly. Now, the Bible says, a day came that the sons of God came to present themselves to God. In other words, they came to give an account to God. They came to the court of God on invitation to give an account. And the Bible says Satan came also. Now Satan has access to the court of the Lord for two reasons. One is either he's summoned to answer a case 
like in this situation where the sons of God came to give an account. And you know Satan, even though he's in rebellion against God, is one of the sons of God. That's the truth. He's one of the sons of God. He's one of the creatures, one of the angels of God. Even though he's falling, even though he used to be Lucifer and has become Satan, but when they are all sermon, you know, God holds every being and everything accountable. And God can summon anyone for any reason. So when they came before God, the Bible says that he came also. And God said to Satan, where do you come from? In verse 7, he says, from where do you come? And Satan answered and said, from going to and fro on the earth, listen, and walking back and forth on it. Going to and fro and walking back and forth. Now, there are two terms used there and they mean different things. Going to and fro means just roaming about the earth. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil roams about. As a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So, going to and fro means he's roaming about, seeking whom to devour. Now, walking back and forth is a legal term for searching out proofs or evidence on a case. And you see, Satan did not begin that on earth. That was actually his responsibility in heaven. One of the responsibility he had in heaven was to search out case, to search out iniquity, sins, transgression in the life of the beings that were on earth in the days when he was Lucifer, so that they can be judged. And I show it to you from the book of Ezekiel, Chapter 28, verse 14. The Bible says, You were the anointed cherub who covers. I establish you. You were on the holy mountain of God. Remember what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews? Chapter 12, verse 23. It says, We have come to where Mount Zion, the holy mountain of God. So Satan was on the mountain of God. That's why Satan hates believers. Because where he has been denied access, we have been given access. In fact, we have not just been given access, we have come there. We dwell there. The dimension we dwell in as believers is the mountain of God, is Zion. That's our habitation. That's where we are seated with Christ Jesus. But he was denied access. So he says, you were, not you are, you were on the holy mountain of God. Now listen to this. You walk back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. Remember when the courts of God were seated, the Bible says, a fiery flame issued out. A fiery flame. Now that speaks about the judgment throne of God. And the Bible says, he walked back and forth in the judgment throne of God, in the court of God, seeking and searching out for sins, iniquities, and transgression so that people can be judged. Now let's go back to the book of Job very quickly. Job chapter 7. Now after he had answered God from going to and fro on the earth and walking back and forth, God now said to him in verse 8, he says, Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? Now what God was saying is not, Have you gone to look at Job's face? What he was saying is that, Do you have any evidence on my servant Job? And listen to what God says next. He says that there is none like him on earth. God was bragging about Job. A blameless man and an upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. Wow. God was bragging on Job. And he said, you don't have anything on Job. Have you considered Job? Have you examined Job? Have you searched Job out? Did you find any sin, iniquity, or transgression on Job? He's a just man. A man who fears God and shews evil. And then you know what? Since Satan could not find any allegation against Job, no iniquity, no sin, no transgression, 
Satan dared God concerning Job. And he brought an accusation against Job that the blessing of Job were an incentive for Job's service. In other words, Job was serving God because God blessed Job. He said, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not set an edge round about him, round about all that he has on every side? You've blessed the work of his hand. You've caused his substance to increase in the land. And he said, now stretch forth your hand and touch him, and he will curse you to your face. In other words, Satan was saying to God, I dare you. You think you know Job? No, no. It's because you're blessing him. That's why he's serving you. You just test him now, and he will deny you to your face. And that was how God gave a verdict. And permitted Satan to go and test and tempt Job. And he said, all that he has is in your hand, but spare his life. Just one verdict. And so when you see Satan ravaging everything that, that concerns Job and deal with all that concerns Job, and perhaps, let's assume it's in this New Testament dispensation, and Job bans all the bandables, lose all the losable, apply the blood of Jesus, command fire, and then there is no result. Why? Because Satan is authorized to do what he's doing. There's a reason why he's able to do what he's doing. And until you go to the courts of heaven and search out the accusation and answer the accusation and deal with the accusation, you will just be there pouring water on the back of the dock, praying, fasting, crying, and there's no result. So if you will apply the revelation the Lord is bringing to us today, you will deal squarely with all demonic opposition from the root. And you take barriers off your way. Praise God. Now, it's very important to know that Satan specializes in accusing believers on a daily basis. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, the Bible says, Now salvation, power, the kingdom of our Lord has come. And he says, And the accuser of the brethren who accuses, then before our God, day and night has been cast down. So, Satan accuses us day and night. And he doesn't accuse us with things we've not done. Now, Satan can accuse you of what you didn't do when dealing with you. He can try to deceive you and trick you. But with God, he goes with evidence that can be proved. And because he knows God is a just God, even though God is merciful, now, hear what God said concerning himself in the book of Exodus chapter 34, verse 5 to 7. He descended to go meet Moses. He said, Now the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord, the Lord God Almighty. Long-suffering, he says, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, abounding in goodness and truth. Keeping mercy for thousands. Now listen, he's merciful, he's gracious, he's long-suffering, he's abounding in goodness and truth. And then he says, keeping mercy for thousands. Now listen to what God says next. He says, forgiving iniquity, transgression and sin. Wow. He forgives iniquity, transgression, and sins. But then he said, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon their children and children's children to the third and the fourth generation. Wow. In other words, God is merciful, is gracious, long-suffering, abounding in goodness and truth and mercy, forgiving iniquity, transgressions and sin, but he would hold the guilty accountable and he would visit the iniquities of fathers upon their children, children to the third and fourth generation. Now, as believers, as Christ redeemed us from the cause of the law, yes, he did. 
as he nailed to the cross according to Colossians 2 verse 14 the handwriting of ordinances which are handwritten legal documents of the law which are contrary to us which are invently against us yes he has dealt with all of that but you see many things in the body of Christ and in our redemptive package are not automatic you need to enforce them for instance salvation is not automatic every sinner how they has been saved that's the truth because God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life so the prostitute the drunkard the thief the ham robber the kidnapper kidnapper had they has been saved potentially but it is not automatic until they receive Jesus as Lord and Savior they can be saved in reality now Jesus has paid the price for our healing by his stripes we were healed so we've all been healed we all have access to divine health but it's not automatic it's not automatic in the sense that if sickness come against you healing will not be administered automatically you have to lay claim to it you have to enforce your salvation. That's why the Bible says, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. We have, to, we have been saved, but we have to live saved. We have to live out the salvation. We have been made righteous, but we have to live out the righteousness. That's why I say, he who does righteousness is what is righteous. Now, for time's sake, I want you to know that if there is a sin, a transgression, an iniquity in your bloodline or in your life the devil will capitalize on that as a legal ground to oppose you so if you really want to deal with the legal right he has against you you must repent on your behalf and the behalf of your bloodline your family lineage even to Adam taking away sins transgressions iniquity which means disobedience to God's command, whatever involvement in idol worship or cultic activities in the all court, involvement in the all court, all manner of sins. You have to repent on, on behalf of your family, your bloodline. Not that if you repent on behalf of your bloodline or your forefathers, then they make heaven. No, that's not it. But that would take the legal right that the enemy has to afflict you, oppose you, or to contend with you. So by so doing, you enforce your own deliverance. You enforce your own forgiveness. Praise God. Now the fourth thing to do when you humble yourself and repent before God, the fourth thing to do is to petition the ancient of days for a verdict. In your favor to ask him for a verdict in your favor and say Lord I know yes I stole I lied I cheated I did this I did that yes my grandfather killed were involved in adultery idolatry and all manner of sin but Lord because of the sacrifice of Jesus I repent I pray for forgiveness and having done that you now ask the Lord for a verdict and say Lord because you have forgiven me I ask now for a verdict in my favor against the opposition the forces the legal right the enemy has to work against Lord take it away whatever is opposing the fulfillment of your word of prophecy over my life Lord take it away now when you take away the legal ground by a verdict from the Lord just like the Lord gave that spirit a verdict and said to him go convince Ahab you would succeed like he gave David a verdict and said go and contain with the Philistines you'll be victorious then you cannot confront the devil and that's the next thing to do now if you're trying to find out where this is in the New Testament you can look at the book of Second Corinthians chapter 12 when Paul said because of the abundance of revelation that was given to me a messenger of Satan was sent to buffet me and Paul didn't contend with the unclean spirit 
Instead, he went to seek the Lord. He said, three times I besought the Lord that it might depart from me. Now, I wish I had time to, to deal with that. He said, but the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. So here was a demon opposing Paul, afflicting him, dealing a blow at him. And the Bible says, a messenger of Satan was sent to buffet me. It's in the Bible. I don't know what you're going to do about that. And then he said to the Thessalonians, he says, I want to come to you time and time again. He said, but Satan hindered me. In 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 18, he says, Satan hindered me. How would Satan hinder an apostle? There was an issue. He said, if in, in Corinthians, said, because of the abundance of the revelation that was given to me, least I be exalted above measure. In other words, pride was already set in. It was already being exalted. He said, but at least I be exalted above measure. A messenger of Satan was permitted, authorized to buffet me. So, if you deal with the issue of sins, you can ask God for a verdict. Now, when you ask God for a verdict, then you can now rebuke the forces of darkness and stop the activities as you destroy their works. The Bible says in James 4 verse 7, it says, Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. So, until you submit to God, you have no business resisting the devil. Until you deal with the issues of sin, transgressions, iniquity that gives the enemy a legal right to oppose you, to buffet you, to hinder you, you have no right contending with the enemy. It will be a waste of time. So when you pray, you fast, you seek the Lord, and you are not making headway, that doesn't call for more fasting and prayer. Don't fast yourself to death. What it calls for is that there is a reason why the enemy is opposing you. Search out the cause and deal with it. And when you deal with it, once you resist the devil, he will, what? He will flee. James 4 verse 7 says, Submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will, what? He will flee. So the fifth thing to do is to rebuke the forces of darkness, stop their activities, and destroy their works. And then the last thing to do is to decrease heaven's verdict over the situation and proclaim God's blessing upon your life and your bloodline. Amen. When you receive a verdict from God and God says to you, All right, I've forgiven you. Your iniquity is pardoned. Like he said, say to Israel, your warfare is accomplished. Your sin is pardoned. Now I would help you and bless you. When you receive a word, you've gone to the court of heaven and you have sought for redress. Your case has been read, you stated your strong reason, and you've asked God for mercy that you'll be acquitted. And God obliges you and gives you a verdict to your favor. And when God does that, you can now face the devil and deal a big blow at him. And himself will know when he has nothing against you, he will flee. When he has nothing in your bloodline, he will flee when you resist him. And then you can now begin to proclaim God's verdict. And you ensure that you proclaim also his blessing upon your life. Amen. I need to stop here. But I believe that you have been blessed. Praise God. So at this point, I want to pray with you very briefly. Know that the ancient of days is working for your good, is on your side, is not hard to get you. So if you will know God as the ancient of days and walk with him with that revelation that this identity of God captures for us so that we can enjoy this dimension of the dispensation of the justice of God, then you will enjoy a turn around in your life. You will deal squarely with all demonic opposition from the root. Praise God. But it begins, first of all, remember, 
the first thing is salvation. You have to surrender to Jesus. And if you like to do that, I want to pray with you. It's salvation that gives you the right to receive your sins forgiven and blotted out. You know, when you repent and you give your life to Christ, God doesn't forgive you. He blots it out. In other words, He wipes your slate clean. But when you are born again and you sin, He now forgives you. So, pray with me. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for all you've done for me. Thank you for your love for me. Say, Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God, that you died for me. You were buried and you rose again on the third day. Today, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Help me to serve you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Now, just take those six steps and deal with the legal right the enemy has against you. And get a verdict from the court of heaven, from the ancient of days. And then you are good to go to make progress in all facets of life. I pray for you that the Lord will bless you and help you and reveal to you whatever is hindering your blessing, your progress, whatever legal right the enemy has against you, that he will reveal them to you. And as you repent, may the Lord forgive you and contend with you against the adversary as he acquits and discharges you and bless you in all things. I pray for the sick be healed, the band be loose, the oppressed be free, the weak become strong. And I pray for those who have been stagnant. May God take away the legal rights the enemy has to oppose you. Receive speed and progress. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Stay in the loving grip of our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep holding on to the wheels of the faith. The Lord bless you. I love you. And please feel free to share the video. And also like the page. God bless you. Bye-bye.